Okay, welcome to the 25th film in this little series and uh, God knows how many films it's gonna be. There's so many flies to be tied. Um, as you can see, maybe we moved and uh, we're actually doing new facilities for the company with a new office and uh, new everything. Uh, meaning we get a room where we can actually have this um, filming stuff out all the time. And we're not ready here. Uh, I have a few things. Maybe you see this little cupboard. It's uh, supposed to come up on the wall. And this is made for... Um, this is made for flies that I've been given by people. Uh, and special flies of my own catches too. But mostly flies that I got from people. And I have all these boxes in my cupboard with flies and there are flies from celebrities like Stan Bogdan and Lee Wolf and uh, Schwebert and and all these guys but also I just looked and there are uh, some local stuff that's really interesting what should we start with I have one here and I looked into this and it's an article um, from an old British magazine or paper about Hale's book on classic flies. And in here, this comes from uh, Margrethe Thomsen who was uh, uh, doing uh, empty flies and she was our best supplier of materials back in the 70s and 80s. And uh, she's unfortunately not here anymore. I haven't M Terror here, tied by Åke Dahlberg in Stockholm, a classic Swedish tire from the old days. And this is a pretty cool thing. I have from Sven o Hallman, uh, Chillems. I guided him back in the old days. And here it says that uh, I got some water in one of my boots when I was guiding him. And he sent me a bottle of medicine, he said which was a good bottle of whiskey, but it was together with an original Chillums, which is uh, one of the s classic Swedish flies. And when looking through this, there are a lot of crazy flies. So also look at this. It should be um, a row fly. I think I got that in Alaska a long time ago, but it's gonna be filled up. But now I'm gonna, I put one fly in here and I'm gonna take that out. It's one of my flies. I tend to keep the flies I catch big fish on. And uh, this is what we're gonna tie today. Uh, it's called uh, Thunder Spay. And uh, this little Lesmondary fly uh, gave me a 20.6 kilo salmon uh, on the M many years back. I think late 80s or early 90s, I think. So we're gonna tie this hackle fly the way that I fished it back then and the way I fish it today. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, Thunder Spay. I'm going to tie it this way. And uh, this is actually one of my patterns. It's one of the patterns that many people have said are their patterns, but I know it's mine. Uh, and uh, I, uh, first time I saw white heron hackles. Uh, this is the flare I wanted to tie. And I'm going to tie it the, the way I fish those this kind of flies today, which is a bit different. I'm going to tie it on a BTT and we're going to tie it on the smallest BTT. Uh, I'll uh, use an orange metal one, extra small fits tubing. And I start by just melting this get a little edge before I put it on to the BTT. BTT is brass turbo tubes. They are super light and actually these are lighter than being tied on a plastic tube. Uh, so if you want to have a super light fly, the BTT is a super good thing. And Doing this, since the BTT doesn't have this little lip here, I'll always take just a tiny bit of glue and I put a little glue on top here. Um, it helps my thread not 
sliding. And today I'm going to tie, like I do most of the time, I'm going to tie with the 12-0 uh, uh, SSS and uh, do this again so we don't break the thread. And I put on a little bit of thread. And this is going to be a super simple little fly. And when I started tying this, uh, I did it with heron. But, and we have our heron packs, uh, probably seen them. It's a uh, fantastic material, but it's kind of fragile. And uh, I would say that not, nothing, nothing really swims better than heron, but, but they are fragile. And uh, as long as you do, don't do them too big, you can use the rump feathers instead. They are much more durable. You can do them with the ostrich too, if you want to have the big ones, but uh, um, the rump feathers are more durable. And I'm going to tie with rump today. And um, uh, let's see what we're going to do. And I start with an orange one. And this, I treat these feathers like all hackles. And uh, I uh, just pull off the uh, soft part and divide it. And since I want to have quite a bit of orange in this fly, I use quite a long part of the feather. Pull it back, create that little triangle and tie that triangle in. And um, See, so I push it, pull it. Uh, and here I can use uh, our plier. And I'm uh, embarrassed not having all our tools on the market, but uh, soon, I hope. What I do is I tie this in and I double it, meaning that I pull back the part of the feather that I'm tying in, all the fibers. And uh, I do this two or three turns. And uh, the good thing with our plier, which is different than the others, is it, it's heavy. So I can let go of the feather and I can just take the thread and move it down and secure everything. I don't need to pull there all the time. So I tie this in. And maybe I should say something about the advantage of doing these huckle flies is that you get few fibers, you get a very translucent fly, but you also get a very, very mobile fly. I then take another one, a black one, do the same, strip it off. And uh, you should try not to do same length of fibers because then everything ends at the same time, at the same place. And uh, here I do a feather that's a little bit shorter in fiber and I treat it just the same and tie it in, double it, pull back the fibers and tie it in. And the thing with doubling and pulling back like this is that I get all the fibers one side of the center of the feather meaning I get everything smooth, pointing backwards like this. Actually, uh, it's more for the fly tie than for the fish. Uh, Fishing with Lee Wolf, he had some flies, he tied everything the opposite way because he wanted to have even more, uh, the fibers standing out from the fly even more. But um, I do it this way, and this will swim nicely. And remember what the, the what the BTT or the turbo thing do is that it opens up and create turbulence. And here I will have the soft feathers swim in that. Thunder spray, of course, it comes from the thunder and lightning. So I'm going to use um, I mean, I'm going to use a, a guinea fowl that's dyed blue, and. Um, I have some guinea fowl here. I think the best way with guinea fowl is to buy a skin. If you have full skins like this, um, you can pick the size that you want. You can also use uh, <clears throat> the wing feathers where you have some really nice hackles down below. 
If you don't have the guinea fowl, you can also use a regular soft tackle from a patch like this. You can see it's really similar. It doesn't affect the fly um, and the, the appearance of the fly. Okay, so I take this and I look at it and I'm gonna strip off one side of this so I can make few turns um, even. And uh, I took away the part I was going to save. I just changed my mind there. And I strip off the part on the other side too. It's much easier than to decide how much I want. Look, I have a few of these are bad fibers. I take them away and I open up this feather, create that little triangle and cut it off. Tie it in, be careful uh, so you don't work your thread too much forward. And since I have fibers on only one side of this, I don't need to double, okay? Everything coming the right way anyway. Tie it in, work your thread at the same place not for, forward to get uh, everything to be hidden by the little comb we're going to put in front. Okay, hackles. These ones don't move as good as the, the, um, the pheasant feathers, but uh, they stand out a little bit and uh, they're soft enough to move anyway, so it's, it will be nice. Jungle cocks. Every time I show you the site this, and we need to do it in the right way. And I take small jungle cocks. Oops. Some broken ones. Unfortunately it happens. Start with the one on my side. And since I want the jungle cock to be on the side, I don't want to curve it like this but I don't want it to be flat. I want it to curve it this way. So I pull it on my thumbnail a little bit like this to get a good shape of it. And then I put it on the side and tie it in. And I try to cut between everything I tie in so I don't get too much stuff uh, in the waveboard, the next thing I'm gonna tie, next material. Look at that, form it a little bit, pull it off, and normally I twist the wise here, but I don't wanna do that because then you guys getting out of focus, or me getting out of focus for you guys. Tie that in on the side like this, couple of turns I can pull out this try to pull out this little edge I have here here we go difficult for me to see and oops I cut it off there we go okay make sure the jungle cocks are even and uh, then uh, on the thunder and lightning, of course, I can use the black head uh, as on the regular fly or, or the original fly. I can put spice it up with anything, but I actually think that um, what looks best are the orange metallic ones or a copper one too, but orange metallic is really, really nice. Pull on the cone, take a little glue, and you've seen me do this before. I use support and I put the glue a little bit away from the fly uh, just to protect the hackles. Hold back the hackles, pick up some glue. Pull a little bit, wait a few seconds and then I cut it off. Take the cone, twist it down to spread uh, the glue that's still there. 
pull it down tight out of the vise hold back the hackles use support with the finger cut it where you want it i want it to be like two and a half millimeter or two to three and unfortunately white lighter today but um have to i think i said it last time i want i need to buy some lighters melt it a little bit that will get this little thing that will secure uh the cone and here we have this little thunder spay uh hackle fly and it's a superb fishing fly it doesn't look much but uh, I've taken many fish on this and I've taken some big fish, big tricky sea trout daytime when it's hard to get them. Um, normally I fish this with a loose hook and a little bit of plastic just to secure the hook, okay? But if you want to have a body uh, on a fly like this, should be this translucent. Uh, as translucent as possible, I just take a small piece of uh, medium, and what I do, I what I can do here is that I can put on a cone too to protect it, but I can also just have it the way it is, and I just put the thread on, and I take our regular uh, dubbing not the glitz the long fibered synthetic flashy stuff this is uh, a dubbing that's made on a very translucent fiber um, doesn't make as much different when we uh, work the black one but it's good when we have um, other colors and what i do here is that i just put it on I create a little bit of volume to this. Pull down hard on the, on the thread. Then instead of doing uh, knots and stuff, what I can do here when I want this close is that I take the glue and I put some glue onto the thread. A little bit all the way up. And then I just put these turns onto the front and I want them to be right on the front. Pull it down, hold it a little bit and just cut it off. Brush it out a little bit, the magic brush. Get it to be a little translucent like this, add a little volume. Now what I do, when I attach this, I slide this on onto my leader, I slide this onto my leader, I tie on the hook, I secure the hook in the bare medium, see if I can put this on for you, and it will fish down like this. So I add a little body to this. But I fish a lot of those flies, a lot of the time with this kind of flies, also without any body, just to make them super translucent, okay? Okay, thunder spay. Since it's so simple fly time, I'm gonna do you one more fly. And uh, uh, when it comes to these hacker flies, I think maybe they are best when it comes to really tricky fish or uh, they are super good when it comes to uh, let's see what we have here take a little white here when it comes to uh, clear river conditions low water and uh, fish that don't want to have too much uh, too bulky flies um, here, you see, now I match my lighter. Do the same. Wait a little bit, I tie, I pull this little short, but 
This is how I normally do it when I do it myself. I don't need much plastic. I can use that actually for a couple of flies. Get it on and slide it on and do the same. This is like repeating. It's the same technique. A little bit of glue here. If I'm lazy, I'll keep on the black thread. All right, do I have a white thread on the table? I don't, but here I can also use the white thread because it's, uh, I can be a little bit sloppier with the thread without destroying the fly and without making the thread be seen through the actual materials I tie in. Okay, I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna do this with two, see what I have, with two different uh, colors of uh, romp feathers, pheasant romp feathers. And this is gonna be a version on the Silver Doctor. And here I could use gray, of course. It'd be more like a silver gray, but I can also use white and I'm going to use blue. And the thing is, I get very good contrast with these two colors. And also I get the typical uh, sunshine colors. Tie that on, do the same, double, hold back, double in, close to the BTT. And this is a typical fly that should be tied on the BTT to be fished in low water, dangled, maybe when the water almost doesn't move. Tie it in. Add a few fibers in front of uh, the thread there. I just pull them back, hold them back and make them be part of the fly. Slide down the scissors. Look so it's even. Okay, the white is ready and the, I look so it's even. And um, when the fibers are as many fibers on the feather as it is here, the fly will almost always be evenly tied. Uh, so it's it's not really necessary to do something. Uh, I'll take a blue one, do the same. And uh, here I actually want to have less blue than white. And um, you can, of course, uh, put on more blue than white if you want. It's all what you, what you want to have out of your fly. Do the same, tie it in. Oops, you see now the thread comes down on the plastic. I don't want that already. I want that later on. So I, I changed it. Maybe I can say something about our little plier coming out. This is, uh, this is like a combo of a few things that's been on the market before. I like this. This is the only way that will hold the feather. This little uh, metal thing that will grab it uh, with a, what you call it, with a spring that will hold it down. And then there's a bit of rubber in between, meaning that this will, you're not going to pull off the hackle uh, when you tie it in. And then you can you can uh, wind it on with the just holding the handle like this. I think this turned out really nice to be honest with you. Okay, in front of the white again, double, hold it back, tie in. I can take this little away it's just in the way for me and here I can decide how much blue I want I could do one turn but here I decided I want to do two turns like that and I tie it in oh here we go come on sometimes these feathers are a little tricky 
If I double a couple of these, it doesn't really matter. Then I tie it in. Make sure it's even. So I got just as much blue all sides. And again, with the, this kind of feathers, it's simple. You just wind them on, to be honest with you. Okay, so I'm gonna put on a teal feather in front here and most of them I do quite a short teal feather. I do them the same as I did with the, <coughs> with the guinea fowl. I strip off one side. <coughs> Sorry, my throat says it needs some coffee. And you know you have to drink it out of a cup that shows that you're trying to change things here. Yes, been working against the fish farming industry a long time and the last couple of weeks it's been quite intense. Okay, sorry for that, but here we go. I do this feather and I make sure that I have so I can do a couple of turns. And uh, short or long, you decide. This is going to be like a medium on this one. <clears throat> and again, put your scissor on the finger, get support. Tie it in. And one of the questions I get sometime is that should I wind the huckle this way or should I wind the huckle this way? Does it really matter? And the strongest, it will be strongest if you do feather one way and thread the other way. But you can also do when you do it like this, you can do feathers different way so you secure the fly like this this is now going to be tied the opposite way than the thread meaning it will be the strongest way of securing this feather close two turns will be good for me if I have a few that's too long here I can just pull them off, pull them off afterwards. Sometimes they really want to go away, sometimes they don't, depending on the quality of the feather. Maybe I don't want to take those away, just a few of them here. Here we go, make sure it's even. And to be honest with you, I really like this fly. I think it's a superb sunshine fly, especially on the on the clear river. Uh, okay, do the same. Two jungle cocks. And if I'm going anyway, I'm going smaller on this one because it's a fly that I want to have uh, a really delicate and really not add too much dark on them put on the small one put the finger make sure it's in the right place few turns and the jungle cocks has a tendency to twist when you tie them in and uh, maybe in a before I've been telling you why I can show you quick how it works and on a feather like this, uh, the center of the feather is flat this way. And when we come down here, it becomes round. And here it's actually on the other way, meaning that it can be tricky to tie this in because it might want to turn. Uh, so you have to be aware of that when you tie it in and uh, make sure that you really look at it so you don't get jungle cocks pointing all different ways and uh, do the same you see i cannot can't always hold this because it's not flat that way too long does it matter for me it matters does it matter for the fish no i don't think so and i hold this in and i pull it down and tie it in and normally I do three to six turns with the material. 
make sure that this is now down on the side the way I want it to be. One more turn. Pull this up and uh, normally I have a light above me but it doesn't work when I type for you guys. Okay, so silver doctor, white in the front. Well, that's my idea, but from the doctor series, organizer, I have to tell you how good this is every time I type. Saved my life, all the mess with all the cones. Dr. Fly's got a red head, okay? Uh, especially the silver doctor, and uh, in the old classic style, it was made of wool. Berlin wool and uh, then on most flies it turned out to be uh, varnish and uh, much more durable and a lot better is the cone so that's why we do the red metallic cone and I do the same pull it down take away the thread take the fly out of the vise make sure it's tight and everything is even here. Hold it up, support, and cut it off. And uh, I know I told you before, but Newton was a smart guy. He found out that if I hold it like this, it melts that way. If I hold it like this, it also melts that way. And I'm not going to get that little good hole for my leader. Okay, super. This fly, I very seldom or never fish with the dressed body. I want this to be this translucent. So what I do, uh, and what I, I actually do all the time, come on now, I want you to be there just a short while for me, is that I carry, um, a wallet and in my wallet I have uh, different uh, bodies for this and the, the thing is that I want to secure the hook the, it, because if I don't secure the knot in on the hook the knot can slip in the eye like this and the hook can fish sideways so what I do I have a spare little body I do the same I put this on slide on the tube, tie on the, the hook, slide the hook into this, and it will slide down on top of, of this like that. It's gonna look like this, see if I can show you. Um, very translucent, very uh, mobile, and to me this is the, best way of tying these um, spay flies. <coughs> in the old days, I actually found one here in my on my tying desk and I bet it's been there 15 years or something. It's a black doctor. It's tied with a red uh, heron hackle and a black one, some guinea fowl, but on the singles here the singles are steering really nice. Uh, it can be nice to put a little mallard wing on like this. But it's not as translucent. It's not as mobile. The wing will uh, hold the hackles down. This is like class tied the classic way with the hackles down below like this. It looks really nice. But if you hold these flies in the water, this will move more. This will swim better, it will be more translucent. And today I can tie a mallard wing because I, it's just nice to tie a classic mallard wing. But as a fishing fly, these ones are to me way better. So they're quite big here. I mean, uh, not big to compare to most of the flies I tie here in those, those films, but they're not tiny flies. But these ones, you can, you can tie these down 
with the 10 12 millimeter uh, hackle and that's it just the hackle that reaches uh, a few millimeters behind the the um, BTT and when you do those small extreme summer flies uh, always strip one side of the feather because otherwise you're getting too many fibers and it's gonna it's not gonna be uh, even uh, so we've done uh, the 25th film it's simple flies but sometimes simple flies can also be very very effective and this kind of flies is also something that I have in my boxes all the time and um, I'm crazy enough to carry everything. I even have my bombers in my box on the early June fishing. I really want to have the tiny one up to the biggest flies and then I can I can decide and I have an option to present a, a small little translucent fly like this to a fish that's been pulling or or showing interest or so so everything up to this size i would say very 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 seldom bigger than this i think i have a few but but this is supposed to be small or medium so of course you can do this any color combination a black and green one is excellent uh you can do uh the, the take the gray as i said and do like a silver uh, silver gray version or you can do uh, uh, a red hackle with the black and do the black doctor or you can do even a brown one and do like a batagorba uh, spay fly version uh, okay so uh, we're ready with this little film very simple time but I hope you you liked it and uh, those of you interested to do it with heron we have the heron hackle of feather packs and those of you who who like the rump feathers we have this pack it's 100 feathers and they're both bleached and uh, not bleached in all different colors and you look into this and you understand how many options it is to do this kind of design with the just one pack of feathers and then of course this time too we have our pattern packs with the material to tie those flies and in this one there is a, a lot of different uh, hackle feathers this time and also if you don't tie we have the, the ready flies for you also six in one of these and you can subscribe to these too but you can also buy the ones you you find most attractive or the ones you want to tie or fish on the web so uh, I would like to thank you for watching this and uh, I hope maybe next time this cupboard is full of flies from all over the world from tires I've met and fishermen I've met tires also in the exhibitions but mostly from fishermen on rivers and um, today it's been snowing like hell outside and we hope the spring will be here and um, despite the maniac we have in the east it is possible to travel uh, not to to Russia but uh, we are open for traveling and that is feels very good and I will miss out on Russia, of course, but uh, uh, as it is now, it's a personal choice to not to go there, I would say. So, again, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I know what we're going to tie next time. I'm not going to tell you, but it's going to be very much different from what we did today. Thank you.